Hey everyone, Dan Takashi here. The main Japanese stock index, which is the Nikkei 225, has been barely moving for the past few weeks. It's just been sitting in a narrow range, not moving at all. Yet, there's something going on here. You look deeply into volatility, into positioning, and into correlation. There is actually a lot of risk deep down that's been building over the last few days. And there is a risk that these Japanese stocks could crash at any moment. And I want to highlight to you in this video in about 10 to 15 minutes. For those of you new to my channel, my name is Dan, former Wall Street guy, former hedge fund guy, traveled the world, came back to Tokyo, Japan, where I was born recently, and just started YouTube this year, started the Japanese channel. January, started this English channel you're watching right now, just a few months ago. So I would very much appreciate if you press subscribe, follow me going forward. Today's topic, I'm going to divide up into three main themes. Number one, we're going to do an overview of why there is something called higher volatility in the Japanese markets, higher risk. We'll talk about what it is, what, what does it mean for volatility and why specifically it is right now there higher risk. Number two, we're going to go into correlation today. Why specifically are Japanese stocks in a little bit more danger compared to the rest of the world? And number three, my recommendation to you, I've been recommending to you so many different things lately, especially with Japan, the bank stocks. What should you do? I'm talking about high risk. What should you do with your Japanese bank stocks? I want to give you an update going forward. Okay, let's get started here. First and foremost, what the heck is risk? What the heck is volatility? What am I talking about? So a lot of people use the term risk as in, oh, it's sort of a negative term. It's sort of a, uh, a bad word, you know? It means that volatility is coming. It means that something bad could happen to the market. Uh, the risk of something bad happening, right? It usually has a negative connotation. On Wall Street, in trading, in investing, in the financial markets, risk is measured against reward. As in, when you take risk, usually you have the chance of more reward. So balancing these two between risk and reward is what gets you returns. Now, ideally you want to lower your risk and increase your return. This is the key to making money. A lot of people are just focused on this part, just the return portion. But actually measuring your risk is very important. Sometimes you wanna increase your risk if your returns are gonna increase even more. Sometimes you wanna lower your risk if your returns don't change that much and you get the same part of returns, then you want to lower your risk. It all depends on the situation. It all depends on how the markets are moving, what type of situation you're in right now. Right now, as we all know, there's a lot going on in the world, right? There's so much going on. Every single day, there's new news about President Trump, about the elections, about what's going on, uh, about the president, next presidential debate, uh, tons and tons of news all over the place. And I want to highlight too some deep parts of the Japanese market right now that actually I think there's a little bit of risk. First and foremost, guys, I want to highlight to you the positioning in the Nikkei stock index futures. Now, guys, the Nikkei index is the main index in Japan, as I'm sure you probably guys have been seeing on my daily update video. It's the main index in Japan. It's the largest index. It's Nikkei 225. It's 225 stocks in the Nikkei index. Now, uh, there's actually a futures market for the Nikkei. And the futures market basically means it's trading based on a future price. But it's actually very, very liquid, as in it's trading all the time. And it's often a very good indicator of the overall position in the market. Now, looking right now, this is the non-commercial net positions for the Nikkei 225 futures, yen denominated trading on the CME, Chicago Mercant Stock Exchange, meaning this is traded almost 24-7. I used to trade this for about 12 years. It trades almost all the time. I barely could sleep because I was always trading this. That's a separate story for another day. But what I want to highlight to you right now is that the positioning right now is very close to zero for non-commercial position. This basically means there's very little speculative position in Japanese. In I'm wondering what the heck does this have to do with risk? It means right now positioning is not very high and it's not very low. And when I see this, the first thing that strikes my mind is not much positioning. Maybe it means there's not much volume going on either. Not much volume. That's right. 
And what does this have to do with risk? Not much volume. Well, when there's less volume in something, it usually means that it can move more easily. Let's say one person wants to buy something, one person wants to sell something, but there's just little bit of volume. So actually this one person who wants to buy could buy a big amount and suddenly move the market very easily because there's little volume. Same with the person who's selling. He wants to sell a big amount, but there's just only a little bit available in the market. So he sells a bunch and he moves the market. This is sort of a simplified uh, definition. But usually when volume is low, it means there's a higher chance of the market. It could move quickly just based on one or two big fund players. Fund players meaning uh, investment fund players. Now, what I want to highlight to you specifically is the ETF in the Japanese Nikkei index as well. 1321. This is an ETF which highlights basically the same thing as the Nikkei 225 index, and it's an ETF that's trading in Japan. Now, you might look at this and it might not seem like anything to you, but zooming out a little bit here, I want to highlight that volume here, this part is very important. Volume in this has been trending lower and lower and lower and lower and lower and this is the 20 day moving average volume has been trending lower right now it's fairly low in the japanese market at the moment and why is this dangerous because it's fairly low at a time when overall in the market the vix which is a measure of volatility for the u.s market but it really also measures volatility for the whole world it's still pretty high right now the VIX is right now 28.4. If you look at this, it's not even close to back to the levels before coronavirus. It's still relatively high right now. So you have a combination of high volatility when volume is still quite low. Not just in the stock market, you could see in the stock market from this 1321 ETF, but also in the futures market as well these two markets futures and stocks really have a big impact on which direction the entire japanese market will move and therefore one of the reasons why i think there's high risk right now in the market okay moving on to number two another second reason why i think there's a bit of a high risk right now in the japanese market it has to do with, again with correlation now, guys, I've been getting so many questions recently about what the heck is correlation, what the heck is correlation. Guys, it's just the rate at which two things move together. If they move perfectly together, it's 100% correlation or one. If they move perfectly inversely together, it's negative one or negative 100%. Usually, most two securities correlations, it's somewhere in between one and negative one. Now, correlation is the red portion of this chart. And again, looking at this chart right now, I'm looking at the Nikkei 225 as the base. Now, the correlation between the Nikkei and the S&P 500, which is the main index in the US, is right now on a weekly chart basis about 0.61. This is pretty normal, right? Usually, it's about 60% correlated right now. Sometimes it's higher. It's actually, it was actually much higher, close to 100% for the last few weeks, and it's been trending down on a weekly basis. Now, what I actually want to highlight too is Japan, I was looking at a lot of indices around the world to see where is it highly correlated right now with? What market is it trading with? How about Australia? Is it trading well with Australia? No, Australia, the correlation is very low, 0.25. Okay, how about Canada? 0.51, not that high. Uh, let's say, how about the FTSE UK? Not high at all, negative. How about Hong Kong? Sorry guys, the screen is very slow today. Hong Kong, also negative, but I actually found a couple indices where it's actually quite high. DAX Germany, very high right now, 0.75, quite high. And another one, Kospi, this is the Korean index. This is the highest, 0.76. The Nikkei is moving very correlated right now with the Korean exchange. And to be honest, guys, this is something that I have noticed throughout tens of years of watching and trading both the Korean market and the Japanese market. I used to trade profession in Wall Street. They do move somewhat similar together. They are similar, somewhat economies. Uh, they have a lot of similar characteristics in the fact that they're both primarily exporting nations and 
They're both open at the same time during Asian hours. They're both developed markets as well. Now, why is this worrisome? Because it's trading very, very closely with Korea right now. And if you actually look at the chart of Korea, namely looking look at Kospi, and also looking at the chart of DAX, the two indices right now, which are highly correlated with Japan right now, both of them, the chart does not look very healthy in my opinion. First, let's look at the DAX Germany. Sorry guys, this computer is very slow at the moment. So looking at the DAX Germany here, we see this, DAX. Now, right now I'm looking at more of a medium term chart, looking at the one week chart basis. Now, looking at this here, the MACD is trending down currently. It's in a downward phase on a weekly basis. The stochastics is also trending down right now. And this is what worries me is that these are clear breaks down, trending down in the Germany index. Also, Nikkei, as we pointed out, is trading very closely with Kospi, which is the Korean index. And this is also crossing down. Not only is it crossing down both in the MACD and stochastics, but it's crossing from a very high level. That's very worrisome. If it's crossing at a low level, that's very different from when it crosses at a high level. Again, guys, for more details on MACD, Stochastics, RSI, Bollinger Bands, etc. Please see my previous videos in the description area below so you can get a better idea as to what I'm talking about. But given the fact that right now correlation is high between Japanese stocks and Korean stocks and German stocks and the charts don't look so healthy on a weekly basis, I think this warrants some concern. Okay, so listening to this, what's the last part, third part of my video? My advice to you, what should you do with your money right now? I've been talking about buying uh, Japanese bank stocks. I've been talking about how great Japanese stocks are, but the risk is high, you say, right now. What should you do, Dan? Again, guys, and always investing will be self-responsibility. So please take this with a grain of salt. At the end of the day, please make your own judgments. Uh, and again, guys, I recommend investing majority of your portfolio, long term investing, and then some of it short term investing long term. I recommend 70, 90 percent of your net worth divided up this way into different categories. Also, guys, do note that I also recommend short term investing 30 to 10 percent of your net worth. You put a few days to a few months, follow the trends, use technical analysis, 5 percent max for your net worth per one idea and use hedging when you can. Hedging is not scary. Hedging is not crazy. Hedging is why hedge funds are called hedge funds. It's very normal. It's very necessary. For more details on this, guys, please see my below videos uh, for long term investing, short term investing, why you should do both. It's the sharp ratio. This is very important. So today's recommendation. What do I recommend to you, given the fact that right now the risk seems to be a little bit high in Japanese stocks? My recommendation. It's pretty simple. Continue to hold your positions, but be very wary right now that risks is high. I continue to hold 1615, the Japanese bank ETF. Why? Because this is still trending up on a weekly basis, even though the Nikkei index, even though the topics index itself, that's showing some weakness. That's showing a trend that's maybe starting to maybe go back down and it's following Korea and it's following Germany. The bank index is on a weekly still basis trending up, but I am hedging right now, and this is what's very important. This is a short term investment. As I said, hedging is super important, especially right now when volatility is high, volume is low, and Japan looks like it's trading together with Korea and Europe, which are going down. So buy 1615 and short 1312. That's my recommendation. You can do this uh, on the Japanese market. Uh, during Japan hours, these are both extremely liquid. Uh, even if all my followers got in, all 300,000 between the English channel and Japanese channel got in at the same time, this should not move on a one day basis. Uh, I highly doubt everybody's going to do it anyways, but even if they all did, I uh, highly doubt it would move because these are such monstrous big volumes. So stay wary, stay nimble, and stay hedged. Stay one to one. I would do whatever yen or whatever dollar amount you're buying 1615 short the same dollar or yen amount 1321 
in your account and this is again a short-term investment short-term investing i highly recommend you keep your short-term investing which is anyway between a few days to a few months in a separate brokerage account from your long-term investments you want to keep it separate so you have a clear head as to what's long term and you're investing on a monthly to monthly basis for your retirement account and short term which is much shorter following trends this is an idea today about following trends so please keep that idea separate thanks guys for watching my video today hopefully enjoy the content let me know what you guys think please comment below in the comment section i'm reading your comments every day guys i can't answer everybody's as i'm getting thousands but i am liking and letting you know that i'm reading uh let's just let you guys know the spam issue is resolved uh, i destroyed whoever is spamming me that guy's gone uh and i put in a lot of new security measures so hopefully that'll be no issues for you going forward but do let me know if uh anybody is uh giving you issues on my comment section uh i will destroy them <laughs> as soon as i can <laughs> all right guys thanks so much for watching i uh, appreciate it if you would uh, subscribe to my channel have a great day have a great night see you later guys